flood, and a big swatch of washboard musculature with it. Remo got another flood of internal organs and caught the liver on its way down. Quickly, he collected the remaining livers of the dead men and worked them into pâté, which filled the remaining serving dishes very nicely. Recapping them, Remo smacked his hands together and surveyed the room. Man, can I cook or what? It was Kwanzaa in the White House. The traditional Christmas tree stood on the White House's sprawling north lawn. A Douglas fir this year, festooned with traditional holiday lights and decorations. It had been a tremendous relief to the President of the United States when the First Lady had announced that they were going traditional this year. Does that mean no Star of David on top? After your tree lighting fiasco? Now that's one memory I'd like to forget, like the 103rd Congress. No Star of David, sweetie. No Kachina dolls, Eskimo totems, or voodoo saints? Orishas, and no. Just red and green bulbs garnished with silver tinsel. Your fans are going to think I had you killed and replaced with a clone. I want to celebrate our fourth White House Christmas like Abraham Lincoln did. Fighting the Civil War? No, in the traditional all-American manner. The president realized at last she was serious and grinned broadly. I'll make the arrangements right away. He bolted for the door before the bluebird of political correctness could settle on the First Lady's cashmere shoulders. While you're at it... The president froze. New Year's? A traditional New Year's. See to it. Done. The president relaxed all over again. His hand was on the door. <sighs> he forevermore regretted not flinging open the door and charging through to do his presidential duty. But in between, we're doing Kwanzaa. The president whirled as if shot in the back. Kwanzaa, the Black Christmas. It's not Christmas. Christmas is the 25th. New Year's is January 1st. Kwanzaa is celebrated during the six days in between. And don't say black. Say Afrocentric. It's more correct. Didn't we have this argument once before? And I let you win. But the election is over with. We have nothing to lose by celebrating Kwanzaa. I won't have to wear a dashiki or anything, will I? No, we light a candle a day and host Afrocentric cultural events. The president thought that wouldn't be so bad. And the election was behind them. What had they to lose? He was sure he'd be able to think of it in a minute. I'll look into it. No, you do it. Yes, dear. And so, on the second day after Christmas, the President of the United States found himself at a Blue Room photo op standing before the African Calabra called a Kinara, lighting the red candle. What is this? It stands for the basic principle of Kuji Chagulia. Isn't that a Stephen King novel? No. Kuji Chagulia. Not Cujo. It means self-determination. Maybe you should be lighting this one. He held the long candle lighter, which smelled exactly like the punk cigarettes he used to smoke in his boyhood days in Arkansas. Smile and light it. In that order. The president applied the flame to the red candle. Now pick up the unity cup. Mm-hmm. The president blew out the lighter and laid it aside. He took up the small wooden goblet that sat on the table mat on which the Kinara reposed with quiet dignity. A drink to unity. The president looked into the cup. The previous day, after lighting the green unity candle, the fluid had been clear. Water. Now it was red. What's this? Uh, goat blood or something. I can't drink goat's blood. If you don't, you'll insult our Afro constituents. Let one of them drink goat blood. And overhearing that, the Reverend Juniper Jackman stepped out of the backdrop of African-American dignitaries, wearing a gigantic smile. Allow me to instruct our president in the ways of my people. <clears throat> Someone needs to get that radiator fixed. That was my what? <laughs> the black national leader and intermittent failed presidential candidate Juniper Jackman brought the cup to his lips. When he smiled again, his teeth were as red as melting chiclets. Uh, what did I just drink? Goat, goat blood. blood. What are we, Haitian? We don't use goat blood in our Kwanzaa. I improvised. <laughs> the president clapped his hand on Jackman's back. <sighs> Thank you, Madam First Lady. Oh, 
Oh, you're more than welcome, Reverend Jackman. Mr. President, how do you feel about celebrating your first Kwanzaa? It's really fun. What is the significance of a red candle? Uh... The red candle stands for the blood of the African people shed by the oppressive white man. Thank you, Reverend. Yes. Was that a radiator? No, that was my wa- Oof. The green candle stands for our black youth and their future. While the middle black candle represents African Americans as a people. I agree with everything Reverend Jackman just said. Uh, Mr. President, does it concern you that Kwanzaa has no traditional basis? Well, well what do you mean? Well, it was started in the 60s by a California political science student who cobbled it together from African harvest feast he'd observed during a field trip. The president looked to the first lady with an expression that all but said, Is this true? The first lady, looking blank despite her pearly professional politician's smile, passed the ball to the Reverend Jackman. Hell, a lot of things started back then that are cultural icons now. Look at Elvis and the Beatles. Would you ask me the same question if we were celebrating Beatles Day in the White House? He's got a point. But really, you think Ringo deserves a day? Mr. President, what can you tell us about the event of the biobubble? Gosh, you got me there. Are those folks celebrating Kwanzaa too? No, Mr. President. The biobubble ecosystem has been destroyed along with all the board. It just came over the wire. The President's normally red face went flat, dead fish belly white. Oh, my God. The Reverend Jackman began sensing the political spotlight about to shift away from him. Uh, let's get back to Kwanzaa, shall we? You do that. I need to look into this. The President left the First Lady and the Reverend Juniper Jackman to carry the Kwanzaa ball. At the door, he paused to shoot a reassuring wave to the White House press corps and noticed the First Lady digging two fingernails into Jackman's backside with such pinching force it brought the opportunistic reverend up on his toes in pain. Additional redness came to his well-